this is the garden moth trap. It's basically a big box with a couple of, uh, in this case, actinic tubes on the top. You can get them with even brighter lights, but they tend to annoy the neighbours a little bit too much for around here. Uh, in the box, down at the bottom here, we've got a whole load of egg boxes and that sort of thing at night, so the moths are attracted to the light come in, fall down to the bottom of the box, find a nice egg box to curl up in and go to sleep. Then you come out first thing in the morning, go through the egg boxes, record what we've got, which is a middling sort of night. We've got a little bit over uh, 15 species there. But we've also got a lot of things in there that aren't moths. So we get caddisflies, you get beetles, we've actually got wood lice in there, there's quite a lot of slugs last night, not necessarily attracted to light. But uh, it's a really good way of sampling what's around in your garden when you're not out in it. And we got a really nice one this morning. This is the lime hawk moth, Minus tiliae. You'd expect to find them around here. We've got Malvern Common just down the hill. There are an awful lot of lime trees about. Unsurprisingly, that's what this eats as a caterpillar. Uh, they get to about that long as a caterpillar. A great big blue horn on the back and a little yellow brush underneath that. They're quite spectacular. And then they come out in April and May and see these uh, attractive little green moths. You can see it's a good two or three inches across. It's a decent sort of size for a British moth and quite um, patterned, quite interesting little moth there. I'm going to put him deep in the wisteria. So this one is another fairly regular visitor to the garden moth trap. Quite a nice little thing. This one is a moth called the Spectacle. And you can see why it's called that from looking at it head on. It's got these little tufts on the front which form what look like little goggles on the front end of the moth. So uh, it always looks as if it's got flying goggles on, it's quite fun. The caterpillar is a little green thing, lives on nettles. You may well have seen it if you spend any time poking around on those. But um, the adult generally starts coming out late April, early May. We never get massive numbers in the trap, get maybe one or two a night. Or a month or so and then they pick up a little bit later they have a second generation around August September uh, around here but uh, quite a pretty little thing and really distinctive moth and uh, away it goes. <laughs> As I mentioned we get quite a lot of things in here that aren't moths and if we uh, uncover this last egg box you get quite a lot of beetles. <laughs> Those are all the same species. Those are the common sexton beetle, Necrophorus humator, which um, some friends of mine study and run the National Recording Scheme. So they'll be getting record 14 Necrophorus humator in there. They'll get the records later. These guys actually live on carcasses, hence sexton beetle. They will be really quite nice in terms of they do parental care. They prepare the carcass for their offspring. They bury it. They... Um, they're really quite nice as beetles go, but I'm not going to pick any of them up because what they do do, if they feel threatened, is produce an absolutely horrendous stench which you can't get out of your hands for about a week afterwards. So uh, they're going to stay in there and I'll scoop them out in a pot later and uh, put them down at the bottom end of the garden where they won't be annoyed too much. Slightly more inoffensive beetle, certainly in terms of the stink. Yeah, these ones, these We've had quite a lot of these this morning. This is the Maybug. It's got a lot of other common names, including Cockchafer, Billy Witch, and various others. This is uh, Southern Cockchafer, Melalontha, Melalontha. There's two species in Britain. So, uh, the northern one is a little bit uh, of a myth, because I've never seen it. And these guys, it's been a couple of years, there's a little white grub. If you've got a lawn, you may well have seen them. But they will... Um, roam around underneath your lawn, underneath bowling greens, golf courses, that sort of thing, where they eat the roots of grasses. And occasionally, where you get really, really big numbers of these guys, they can uh, leave brown patches in your lawn when they kill off the grass. But generally, you don't know they're there. Until May, when these guys come out and they're attracted to light. They're quite big, again, this is about an inch long, and they buzz around in the early hours of the evening, just as it starts to get dusky. You get... Um, banging on windows and that sort of thing as they fly into it because they are fairly clumsy flyers and just randomly bump into stuff. But we get them in the moth trap in quite big numbers for about a month. They'll mostly be gone by June. But really quite attractive beetles when you know what they are. 